And now we're going to finish up the last bit of the Inquisitor's abilities for first edition Pathfinder. Hello everyone and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your Master of Lore and Storyteller Extraordinaire. Going on with the first edition Pathfinder, Inquisitor and their class abilities, we are finally going to wrap things up. And we still have a fair bit to cover here. I know, strange given how much we talked about last time, but once we wrap these up, we'll finally be able to move on to domain abilities and which ones you want to select there and oh my god it's just not stopping <laughs> but before we get into all of that if you're new here to the channel go on down there hit the subscribe button and become a regular member here at the gamers Ted. or if classy people such as yourselves have already gone on to list yourself on such an incredible roster of legendary heroes such as that then go on down hit the like button and share the video far and wide but now, let's actually start talking about what else the Inquisitor has on offer for you. And we kick things off at third level with solo tactics. The Inquisitor treats their allies as if they have the same teamwork feats that they do to determine if the Inquisitor receives the bonuses from those feats. Now, your allies don't gain the bonus from those feats unless they actually have them. Positioning and actions must meet the requirements of the feat, so you still have to be doing the exact same things from the correct position, but you can still get this to work. And this is awesome because this adds a layer of flexibility, not only to yourself, but to your teammates. They're not required to burn feats on getting these teamwork feats. They may have a specific build in mind or be feat starved enough for whatever class they may be playing that they don't really want to do this. This is a way for you to get the bonuses that teamwork feats yield without having to hamper your allies in any way. And then following up with that, we get teamwork feats kicking in at 3rd, 6th, 9th, 12th, 15th, and 18th level. And at these levels, the Inquisitor gains a bonus feat that must be drawn from the teamwork feat list. And as a standard action, up to their wisdom modifier per day, they may change up the most recent feat they've learned for another they meet the prerequisites for. So if you pick up a teamwork feat and over the course of however many adventures or stories you're going through, you find that feat isn't really coming up as much as you would like or doesn't work out as well as you would thought, then you can swap it out for something else that you meet the re requirements for. This adds a great layer of flexibility for you. I mean, the number of times that you can swap this out is incredible. Considering that if you've got about a 16 for your wisdom, that's a plus three modifier, three times per day, you can swap out teamwork feats. So day to day, you can have a great deal of flexibility in terms of what you're capable of and the bonuses that you get out of it. And so this will let you try out a wide variety of teamwork feats. You, on, you are only locked into one after your next level. So if at level three, you pick up a teamwork feat and kind of trade around a little bit and see which ones work best for you, that's not locked in until you hit level six, at which point level six, you begin to swap around the next feat and so on and so forth till you hit 18th level. So this is great to have. Next is Bane at 5th level. Imbue one of your weapons with the Bane quality as a swift action for a number of rounds equal to your Inquisitor level, so 5 rounds. You must select a creature type and subtype and can change the selection as a swift action. So that's actually really handy. This is a good burst for your damage output against a specific enemy type. And the fact that you're not locked into an enemy type will allow you to be flexible with this damage output on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is a great ability. Next also comes in at fifth level and it's discern lies. And as an immediate action, use discern lies as per the spell for a number of rounds equal to your inquisitor level. Now, this is great because you're not having to burn a spell slot for this. This is just a supernatural ability that you have or spell-like ability and you're able to use this to detect if someone's lying. That this does this does kind of overlap with sense motive. I won't say it completely cancels it out because sense motive can tell you 
other details, can help you yield different details. But this is great for investigating, for non-combat oriented things, an area in which the Inquisitor certainly should and could be active. So definitely a good add-on ability for you to get. And again, doesn't cause you to have to burn up any spell slots. Your next ability is at 8th level with 2nd Judgment. You now select 2 Judgments, not just 1, for 1 use of your Judgment ability. And you can only switch 1 Judgment each round. But you can still get 2 different things going at a time now. You can get, your, get boost to your Armor class, to your Attack, to your Damage. Whatever combination of things you might need, you can now apply to yourself and really up your abilities to perform in combat and to survive all of these different encounters. And then at 11th level you gain Stalwart. On a fort or will save against an attack that has a reduced effect on a successful save, the Inquisitor instead avoids it entirely. This is only usable in up to medium armor, so again, more incentive here for you to stick with medium armor, or if you do go the heavy armor route, to make sure it's mithril armor. Then, at level 12, you gain Greater Bane, and when you use your Bane ability, the damage now increases to 4d6, not just the regular 2d6. So again, another great boost to your damage output. Then for 14th level, you gain Exploit Weakness, and you ignore damage reduction on a critical hit. Creatures with regeneration lose it the following round, unless it's one that is always active. And you get a plus one damage when you use a creature's energy weakness against them. So if you're fighting, say, a red dragon, which has a vulnerability to cold damage, you get plus one damage per die for any cold spells that you throw at them, if you happen to throw those at them. So all the way around, some great offensive capabilities here. And the fact that you can negate something like regeneration in many instances is great. Ignoring damage reduction on a critical hit is great. It's not something that's going to activate all the time, but when it does, <laughs> oh man, absolutely incredible. And then, of course, after that, we come up to 16th level with Third Judgment, which allows you to select three judgments for just one use, and you swap two judgments each round as a swift action, if you so choose. So this allows you a great deal of combination in offense, defense, and keeping yourself alive, active, and going at your opponents with incredible tenacity. Then for 17th level, you gain Slayer. When you use Judgment, you select one Judgment. You count this as if it were five levels higher to determine its effects. This, this whichever Judgment you select for Slayer cannot be changed each round, but really, why would you? It's five, counting as if it were five levels higher. You wouldn't want to switch that anyways. So, uh, this is absolutely another great boost to your abilities whether you're going defense or offense this is awesome to have and then lastly we reach our capstone ability of true judgment at 20th level and when you use judgment you may invoke a true judgment on a foe as a swift action and make an attack within 30 feet for ranged attacks the attack deals damage as normal, but forces the target to make a fortitude save, DC 10 plus one half your level plus your wisdom modifier, or die, once per target every 24 hours. So this is one that's reusable pretty regularly there, and that's great to have. And save or die effects aren't always super great, but by this point, with a DC 10 plus one half your level, that's 20 right there. And with a good wisdom score, you could be looking at 26, 27, possibly 28, depending on how much you're focusing on your wisdom. But that's not bad to have and can be a great way to clear some of the more threatening opponents. You're probably not going to use this necessarily on a lot of big bads, but if it's a spellcaster, well, spellcasters don't always have the greatest fortitude saves, and removing them from play is an absolute must. 
But what do you think? Go on down to the comments below and leave your thoughts. Did I get this right? Do you disagree with any particular point of my analysis or going over of these class abilities? Either way, go on down to the comments below and let me know your thoughts and we'll engage in discussion. And remember, hit those like or dislike buttons. And if you're not, if you haven't done so already, go on down, hit the subscribe button and become a regular member here at the Gamers Den. But with all that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night.